Hey guys, so following on from last week's uh, automatic siever, I decided this weekend that I was going to try and automate the uh, the washing process for the IC material. So um, yeah, basically I'll just show you guys uh, what I got going here this weekend. So I had a I, I've always uh, used the blue bowl quite extensively as you guys have seen in my video but the problem with the blue bowl I figured was that uh, it would be okay trying to auto feed the material into it but actually controlling the water speed is incredibly important in terms of getting the blue bowl to work properly and I figured a sluice would actually be a little bit less sensitive to uh, to overall water, uh, water speed so um, I'll show you here I started with a a vacuum cleaner hose from a shop vac, so a nice kind of wide big vacuum cleaner hose and cut that in half so I uh, I got my sluice run basically that's probably total length there it's probably about uh, 1.5 meters or so so probably about five feet I think in uh, American and I printed a whole bunch of these little um, plastic holders to sit under it and then I've just got uh, rubber bands that hold the sluice run or the, the sluice riffles in place and so the idea is that I can easily remove it uh, when I'm finished to wash out the um, wash out the material that's been caught so on this side we get to the uh, the little bit more interesting bit because I wanted to automatically feed uh, material into the sluice I designed and printed a little hopper like this and then using a, a auger drill bit like this that's been modified a little bit that would slide in there and that would then uh, rotate using a little uh, gear motor system like this that basically mounted onto the back there and screwed into there and then I just had that all running from my uh, bench power supply there to control the speed uh, in the end on the video as you'll see this ended up being a little bit too slow for uh, what I want to do so I'll I'm actually going to buy a faster gear motor but um, overall the, the system works pretty well the auger turns and feeds the material through um, the main incoming hose here comes from a big pump uh, down there in the clean water inlet and I've got a little secondary hose here which I ended up needing for a, a little dripper that just would wash the material off of the auger as it came out and so I've got that on a separate little a little separate a little pump down there um, but yeah, that, that was pretty much it. So material would uh, in there, feed its way out into here, drop into there, get washed down. And over here we've got a couple of uh, settling ponds basically before discharging the material. There's a bit at the end of the video about uh, looking at what was discharged from there uh, onto the kind of the drocks of the driveway like that. Um, I figured doing this the first time I wasn't going to recirculate because I actually wanted to see what was happening in the sluice as it was happening so yeah let's uh, let's cut back to uh, oh yeah let's just uh, quickly have a look so this is the this is the result of uh, of the day sluicing it's kind of it's black on top but I did kind of shake it a little bit before and and looking actually at the bottom it was uh, it's obviously a little bit of gold in there so I think this thing has actually worked I'll go have a look at that in the microscope in a minute but it's uh, it's looking to have worked pretty well and we'll have to I know that I started with half a kilo of mixed icy material so I've got a good idea of how much gold should be in there and uh, before I carry on doing any more of this I'm definitely going to have a look at uh, have a look at that and make sure all the gold that I'm expecting is in there um, just a quick one before we go through the day so I've learned a few things today um, the first thing is that the material handling of this um, hydrated powder is a real pain in the ass uh, any kind of either vibration or a tapping on this thing, which are the two things that I basically tried to get the material to flow better, has the effect of actually uh, making the powder at the bottom very dry and very hard and all the liquid kind of sitting on top of it. So what you really want to do is actually keep the stuff in here very well mixed and it feeds through very nice. But you've got to keep the consistency the same throughout all of that. And um, the second thing I think... Uh, this pipe that I ended up using is is too narrow I think you would actually do better with a wider piece of pipe so I might get some uh, 
four inch drain coil or something like that next. I think that would probably actually work a little bit better than this. This stuff is only just over two inches and I would recommend you go up to about four inches and then I'll just basically print bigger versions of those and, and essentially carry on. I, I did like the idea of uh, how easy it was to remove the, the riffles after I finished the sluicing. So um, yeah, let's uh, have a look at how my day went. Okay guys, so here we have the uh, automatic gold sluice uh, running. As you can see I've got the water set to quite a low flow rate. The auger here is turning very nicely. It's a bit, it's a bit dark unfortunately because there's so much black but I can see we're getting a nice consistent feed of material um, out of the hopper and where we've, I've got the little dripper basically here just uh, making sure um, that the, the material kind of gets washed off of the auger otherwise it just tends to spiral out on the auger and fall off in big clumps. It's much nicer to have it just uh, kind of go into the water flow a little bit at a time and because everything is flowing fairly slowly I think uh, it does appear to be working quite well. Um, I'll see uh, so one of the one of the changes that I think um, will definitely have to be made is the the gear motor currently is running at full speed um, at 12 volts so you can see that it is actually turning fairly slowly I'll just uh, rotate you guys a bit you might be able to see the movement a little bit better uh, on the hex shaft here and what I think would actually work a bit better is if I were able to go a little bit faster with this so to, um, unfortunately I'm at the max speed of the motor now so I'll definitely buy a motor with a little bit higher um, speed to modify this thing with so if we just uh, tilt down a little bit and if we can zoom and hopefully focus in there yep that's oh no it's uh it's kind of going in and out of focus but as you guys can see we're certainly starting to accumulate uh, non-black stuff in the stop area and as i work down the sluice by the time you get about uh, let's say maybe eight inches down the sluice or so you'll see there you've got uh, very little material but still catching a little bit so that's about 200 millimeters or eight inches and by the time we get to about 300 millimeters there's absolutely nothing so um yeah i think maybe this uh, slow but steady progress and really i'm actually quite comfortable with this system now i feel like uh, i feel like this thing is running well enough I'll just zoom out for you guys here i think this thing is actually running well enough that i can actually go make a cup of tea now while this is slowly uh, slowly feeding out i'll just come out a bit you see the uh, the hopper there is, is filled up with the material so going a bit slow but um at the end of the day i'm catching everything that's that's coming out the other end of the sluice and so i think i should just leave this and uh yeah i'll set the stopwatch and maybe uh come back in 25 or 30 minutes or so and um, we'll just see what's happened in the meantime so I'll see you guys a bit later okay so uh, for those who may be a little bit concerned about me not recirculating the water on this test I thought we'd have a quick look just at what's coming out of the the back end of the sluice here so it's got two layers of um, obviously settlement or settling before we get to the end here and you'll see there's a little bit of a uh, little bit of incredibly fine carbon particulate in the water there it's not crystal clear but um, at this point like I guess you have to be realistic and say that there's been no chemicals at all involved which is the, the very nice thing about sluicing like this and that means that what you're seeing here is only just very very fine carbon and very fine carbon has the tendency to lock up toxins rather than actually poison anything and so sending it into the driveway like this I'm fairly sure will have absolutely no effect on anything uh, there's there's not going to be any metals coming out the back of this um, even if there were because we're dealing with with IC modern ICs there's no lead anywhere in there um, which which is actually a, a problem in terms of getting into soil because it can be absorbed by animals uh, from plants but uh, tin, uh, even even if there were tin or copper or anything like that coming out the back, 
uh, which is just, I mean, it's practically impossible because the tin and copper particles are just not fine enough to make it through the two stages of separation, even if they make it through the sluice, which they wouldn't in the first place. Um, but yeah, even if tin and copper would be no problem coming out of the back. Um, as I said, lead, not great, but there's no lead in this. Uh, and lead is very dense, so almost no chance of making it out of the sluice and then out of two, two levels of, uh, of settlement before coming out the back here. So um, I think to, to make my experiment nice and easy, I won't be uh, recirculating at this point. If I were going to recirculate, I like working with clean uh, water, so I would have to also look at a filtration system for the recirculation system. But uh, this stuff here actually looks like it'll filter pretty well. I just I'm just not sure whether you'd be able to uh, whether you'd actually be able to remove that um, that carbon effectively even with a decent filter because we're talking incredibly fine carbon. It's completely suspended. It's never going to settle out. So yeah, that's uh, another thing to look at, guys. Okay guys, so here we are looking at some of that material that I ran through the sluice today under the microscope. Um, obviously, as you guys can see, looking pretty good. So what we're looking for is kind of like uh, right in the middle of the screen there, the little gold bond wires. There's a nice uh, long one right there. Let's see if I can perfect the focus. It's at a bit of an angle, but you can quite clearly see bond wires there and it, it kind of looks like pretty much anywhere that I look uh, in this material I'm seeing some bond wires uh, now obviously this doesn't tell us how successful the sluice was it just tells us that there were actually uh, a lot of bond wires scored there's like you can see there quite a lot of component legs actually so this stuff only went through the 60 mesh sieve uh, before actually moving along to the sluicing and uh, yeah that actually is actually quite a lot of component legs uh, more than I would have expected would make it through a 60 mesh sieve still in there but yeah as you can see pretty much everywhere we go wherever we stop bit of focus and you'll see bond wires just everywhere in this stuff so uh, yeah looking pretty good anyway yeah another nice day of uh, mucking around with the gold recovery Hopefully this has inspired some of you guys and uh, yeah, keep the, uh, keep the gold coming. Uh, catch you guys next time.